Carlos Ramirez, owner of NVS Audio in Roselle, New Jersey. We got Keith Doobie from Doobie's Custom. Um, where's your shop located? Hudson, New Hampshire. So our relationship started a couple of years ago. He had ordered one of our stage three kits and we shipped it out to him. I didn't know Keith at the time, but Keith is a perfectionist. He tries to get the best fit and finish out of everything possible. And he kind of annoyed me at the beginning because he showed me everywhere my kit was lacking and he improved on the kit and changed this and changed this. He didn't do it out of malice. He did it to try and help me and my company. So you never know where relationships are gonna lead. Now we deal with each other on a weekly basis and he's a huge benefit to my business and I'm a huge benefit to his. This is what happens when you collaborate and you share ideas and you care about delivering a product that's got a really good fit and finish and a great uh, warranty so your customer can end up with the best product. And that's how we ended up here today. So our kit, we were using the base knob that comes with the sound digital amp. It's their remote level control. The reason we were using it is we, we were doing higher power setups on these bikes and we we're using a lot of sound digital 1600s, 3Ks, 5Ks. So we were mounting them in the glove box. So it plugs into the amplifier. When the amplifier starts to clip, you see it on a little blinking LED. The problem with putting it in the glove box, and that's what Keith didn't like about it, was he can't see it while he's riding. So he reverse engineered it, took it apart, and actually made a mount that mounts in the accessory panel on the Harley Davidsons. First he came out the 14 and up, then he came out the 13 and down. Then he came out with a universal version of it. So the whole idea is you have it in front of you, you could see it while you're riding, and the reason we use them is with the clip indicator, you can protect your speakers even more because people think they can hear distortion when they're riding, but they really can't. So with the bass knob, once you see the clipping, you know to back it down. The reason it was a must for us and mandatory on every install we did is because we give an industry leading warranty. So we do over-the-counter exchange. We give our clients three-year warranty on everything that we install. So it's in our benefit to the, for the customer to know when they're clipping. That way they can back it down a little bit because if they destroy the speaker, it's going to inconvenience them because they got to bring the bike back. It's going to inconvenience us because we have to give them another speaker out of the inventory, which can easily be avoided with something like this. He took our idea and 10 x it and made it better by creating a custom panel like this that goes in the accessory panel of the Harley. So I'm gonna let Keith explain to you the process, how he came up with the idea, what it took to get to this point, and how we're gonna take it a little bit further. Go ahead, Keith. Well, when I first, like Carlos said, when um, I put the system in my bike, I, I, I don't like to skimp. Um, I never have, uh, never will. Um, but as far as this idea came about, um, I definitely did not want to universally screw anything into my bike um that didn't look good um so anyways long story short i looked at the bike and just like i do with all the uh, one-off builds we do with the cars and i tried to figure out a, a way that i could um mount this uh, and i could see it without pulling my eyes off the road uh, the accessory panel on my bike i wasn't even using anyways so i started working in that area um i pulled out the plug reverse engineered it, uh, and then just started working from there. I took the sound, originally I took the sound digital bass knob uh, and tried to figure out some sort of way where if I put it there, could I see it? You know, long story short, um, I made one or a couple uh, uh, prototypes and I sent them over to Carlos for him to inspect them to see if it was even worth it, if he even liked it, if it was a good idea or what. I, I had no clue. I've never seen them before in the industry um so and that's one thing that i do is build a lot of one-off parts so i built a few sent them over to carlos um he gave me some great advice on things that i needed to change um and uh i built a couple more sent them over and uh, he said that uh, i was on the right path um again a couple changes and he thinks i nailed it right down so we did those changes, uh, we took his advice, and um, we started to make them. And then once we started making them, and he started installing them, and he started ordering more, um, at that, that, that time, that's when we invested in some, um, some pretty decent uh, you know, equipment 
and uh, to start making these in a, on a manufacturing level. Um, and then I got in touch with some people and uh, you know, we make all our own circuit boards um, or we have them made. Um, all the, uh, potentio the uh, potentiometers are uh, one off. You know, we designed them, we have them made. Uh, they're not copies. Um, and uh, as far as all the terminals, we, we wanted gold plated for everything. Um, even like uh, some of our universals, um, our RCA cables, you know, I bought all the molds and everything. So they got our logos in them. Uh, I wanted triple protection on them, even though Carlos said you don't need it for the hertz that's going through it. I don't care. You know, um, I don't want to ever have to worry about it if I feel like de designing something that is going to reach that level that potentially could have those hurts through there. I already have something, you know, already designed, made, um, and then just add another RCA on the end or whatever, you know, uh, and then pick a length. But um, after that came out, we started selling these. Um, and after a little while, Carlos was like, uh, you know, maybe you should start thinking about the 98 to 13s. So I had him send me over one and a um, and an accessory panel, and then I started reverse engineering that, and then started coming out with the 98 through 13s. Uh, that led into a few couple universals uh, as well, but um, you know, as far as that goes, it it, it really started off with something uh, that I wanted, um, and it caught you know some eyes once I put it on social media, which totally blew me away. Um, I, I didn't know that, you know, at the time that it was, um, you know, an item that was in need. Uh, like I said, I just made it for myself, but long story short, it kind of morphed into other products. Um, like now with this new product that I have, uh, this is, so what I was getting some calls, people wanted the base knob, but they were already using the accessory panel, whether it was for a center stand, uh, or, or the, um, you know, air, um, so, but they wanted to use my, my base knob. So I came up with this idea right here, and this right here is pretty much a universal, uh, it, it's gotta be the most universal base knob in the industry right now. I've seen nothing like it. I give 24 inches of uh, movement, w whether you put this uh, module in a fairing, uh, in a center console, you know, automotive wise or in a dash or what have you. And there's 24 inches between where the module gets put and where you can put the uh, potentiometer. And then also I incorporated in fiber optics to carry the lights from the module itself right to whether it's the dash or it's the tour pack or center console or, or, or uh, gauge cluster or whatever you're going to do. Currently, um, it, these only work for sound digital amps, yeah. but there will be other companies in the future. But um, if the company makes a remote level control, which is the official name for it, like this one's from AD Audio. So even though it looks similar, the circuitry is different. So if there's a demand for it, uh, for example, the new Euphoria amplifiers, very disappointing, very popular amplifier, do not have a level control port. They have a clip indicator built into the amplifier, but they don't have a port, which is, I have no idea why they, they did that. But if the amplifier is a popular motorcycle amplifier and has a clip indicator and a remote knob, Dube's going to be working on solutions for those. But these are currently universal, which is like the level control from PAC, where it just gives you volume up, volume down with a custom mount to make it fit on the Harleys. But these are currently sound digital only because obviously he has the circuit board built to be able to communicate with the sound digital amplifier. All right. Because at the time, that's all I had. So I worked with what I had. So that's why I get a lot of uh, uh, people ask me, why did you pick Sound Digital? Um, well, because that was in the kit that I had. So I, I worked with what I had. Um, I didn't pick one from another or whatever. Um, I called for the kit. That's what I got. I installed it and I made everything work uh, within the means of it. Um, one of the reasons we made this video is he brought it to my attention that the knobs are not selling as well as they should be. And he asked me, I'm obviously one of his biggest dealers, and he asked me how the knobs sell so well for us. The reason they sell so well for us is it's not optional. It's mandatory in my kits. So when do a build, let's say you go from a stage three to a stage three high power. So you're going from an 800.4, which we can't use the knob on because obviously it doesn't have a base knob port. So you can go to 1600.1. So the price of the knob is already included in the upgrade kit when we package it for our clients. 
The reason I don't make it optional is it costs me money to warranty speakers when you blow them up. So if I can include something in the package that's gonna make it better for the client and better for myself, better for myself because I don't have to replace a blown speaker, better for the client because they can get the most out of their system without overdriving it. People don't understand, unless you know when the amp clips, you don't really know that your 3000 is doing 3000 watts. Because when you think about it, when the clip light lights up, that means you made 3000 watts, now you're pushing it to distortion. So let's say you're at 2500, 2600 watts, you don't know and the light's not gonna illuminate. So if you don't have a light to tell you, once you get to 3000 watts, you're either not getting all of your power or you're distorted. So it's a real easy way to tell them. People think they can hear distortion. By the time you can hear it, you are 25% into the distortion band. You're already heating up the speaker, already destroying it. And on top of that, what people don't realize is if your battery's fully charged, if you're at 14 volts on a lithium battery, the clip light might come on on let's say volume 42. Anybody that competes knows this. As your battery voltage drops, the clip light on the amplifier will come on sooner. So with a fresh battery, you might clip a 42. Once the battery's dropped a half a volt or a volt, you might clip a 39. So if you don't, if you can't see in the tour pack and you don't have that light in front of you, you don't know. So by clipping the amplifier, you're putting stress on the amplifier and heating up the voice coil of the woofer. It's bad either way. Plus it's just under $300 for protection on a system you invested five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand dollars $10,000 into, just makes absolute sense for me. The reason Keith is here with me this week is because we're doing his pickup truck. 2023 Silverado, we went with a Sound Digital 5000 on three gel Audio 13s. That's way more power than these woofers can take. It's way more than the recommended power. We feel comfortable doing it because we're using his universal level controller so he built a sick ass panel that we're going to show you in the video so it looks oem looks 100 percent factory in the truck and he knows that if it lights up just back it down without this he would whack he would definitely wipe these woofers out in a day i guarantee it we're running double or triple rms to the woofers the, the enclosure is small because of the pickup truck and we didn't do a seat lift so we're, we're using common sense we want to get the most space possible without destroying equipment without destroying the woofers without destroying the amplifiers like we both know that a 5000 on 313s is way yeah. way too much but it's the way we like it yeah. he we did a setup over two years ago he has not blown a speaker has not blown mm -hmm. a tweeter has not blown a woofer mm -hmm. he's he's got the clip indicator on his mm -hmm. bike and he's got a good ear so a little bit of common sense you can make the equipment last. Mm -hmm. So this is why we made the video. I don't understand why more people, and you don't have to buy it from him or me. Like you can get the Sound Digital one, and if you wanna screw it, cause some people can't afford 300 bucks, we get it. The Sound Digital one's less than 50. So if you can get this one and screw it to your fairing, it's something we would never do. We would yeah. never screw into our fairing. But if you can screw it into your fairing, as long as you get a visible, visible notification in front, or you can take the knob apart, if you have soldering skills, you could extend the clip indicator and hide it somewhere. Like, we just want you to be protected. You don't have to spend money with us. You can do it yourself. Um, buying the knob from us would make it easier because it's literally two screws and you plug the cord in. But if you're handy and you get your hands on one of these knobs, you could take it apart. I've seen people take apart the amplifier and run that LED to the front. Mm. Voids the warranty on the amplifier. <laughs> you could do it, but at least you're protecting yourself. So we're mm -hmm. cool. That's all we're trying to do. Um, this is an industry we love. We both have big audio on our bikes. We both have big audio on our cars. And something we have in common is we have the clip indicator in every single one. So I've been doing this for years. In my slingshot, I actually took the sound digital knob apart and I custom mounted the LEDs and it looks okay. I will be installing one of these. I've already fabricated a panel to cover the hole that I drilled because this looks sexy as hell. So you have just the knob perfectly centered and then you can make the fiber optics come out and display anywhere that you want. Mm -hmm. And uh, for some of the competition guys out there, they actually don't like using the indicator with the clip light because the judge will actually deduct points mm -hmm. if he sees it light up. Well, if you use the remote mount, you can hide the LED where only you know where it is, you know what you're mm -hmm. looking for. So it's just an idea for you. Um, or if I get a lot of people that are interested in it, I can easily modify an already made uh, model to not show when it clips. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm very easy, you know, give me a call. If you got a certain circumstance that you're interested in or what have you, uh, I mean, I've got the skills, I, you know, as far as uh, 
you know, CAD programming, and I, I can make you just about anything you're looking for within reason, you know? Um, so if you want something not to show clip, I mean, I could totally do it, it if that's what you're looking for. So like I said, if there's something that you guys uh, are, are looking for that's not out there, or if you want me to modify something that I already have, um, you know, give me a call, you know? I mean, it's that easy. You know, it'd be cool if you could make a T-harness going into the back, which gives you the clip indicator somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And then when they're done competing, they could just plug it back and have the clip back on here. That yeah. would be cool. So that that was something I thought of, uh, actually putting in a T-harness, uh, almost like exactly what you said, but mine would go in line with the wire itself uh, from the amplifier to the um, uh, module and you would remotely mount that, whether it was like the uh, remote uh, potentiometer or what have you, and you could uh, mount it over by where the horn is, and you could sh shut that part of it right off, you know, where the uh, blue light is still showing the power. Um, you know, nothing really has to be too visual when you're in that atmosphere, but um, I feel it's extremely important. I, I feel, whether it's my base knob or anybody else's base knob, it's a necessity. I, I don't understand. You know, why somebody wouldn't want to, uh, they spend all this crazy money, you know, I mean, like a lot of money and they don't do something so simple as, as you know, a protect their investment. It, it just doesn't make sense to me. Uh, so we both get a lot of questions on the universal knob. They want to, a lot of people want to know if we could build a universal knob with built-in clip indicator. The reason that's really hard to do is people don't realize that the knob is just a remote information center of what's built into the amplifier. So it's a feature that's built into the amplifier. So the sound digital amp knows when it's clipping because it knows the signal path in the amplifier and it knows what the, it's all comes down to AC voltage. It knows what the AC voltage is supposed to be. And it knows once the voltage passes this, it's clipping. And it also looks at the waveform. It can do that internally proprietary and then so we're just stealing the signal from the remote level and displaying in the front. When you build a universal, the problem is to build a universal with a clip indicator, it would have to look at all the frequencies or just one frequency. Then the problem is to detect that one frequency at what amplitude is too difficult. It's really, it can be done, but it's difficult. And it's really, really, really expensive and really hard to make it accurate because you're looking at different amplifiers, different voltages. One of the hardest parts would be there's amplifiers that take an input voltage up to 20 volts. There's amplifiers that won't take more than four volts. So then when you build the unit, you have to look across this wide range of voltages and then you have to pick a specific, it's just so many variables. The parts are so expensive. Not that it won't be able to be done, but I don't see it being done in the near future. And if it was simple to do, you'd see other manufacturers doing it. I don't know of any commercially available universal knob that has a clip indicator made by any manufacturer. If I'm wrong, leave a message in the comments and we'll look into it and then we'll reach out to them and see how they did it. But um, pulling on all my years of electronics experience, it's, it's doable, but it's not financially feasible. It's not gonna be cost effective. And not to, to mention, if, if you're installing these or if a builder is installing this and they're staying, stating because I have heard it, uh, you don't need a base knob, you know. Uh, I've been doing this for a long time, 20 years, pick a number, 15, 10, whatever. I can adjust these things so you don't even need a base knob. What that tells me is that that guy isn't giving you exactly what it's capable of, all right, because he's being c conservative, you know. That's not what the customer paid for. He, want, he wants that thing to potentially clip if it's going to clip, but if it is, you want to make sure that you know it and you can turn it down. So somebody that says that they can adjust things, all right, so it doesn't clip, isn't giving you what you paid for. It's like saying, I bought a race car, but I have a throttle stop, so I can't spin the tires. How stupid does that sound? You he, know? He's 100% right. When we do our stage three packages, there's no base knob, there's no clip indicator. So when we tune it, we get it to sound really, really good but we have to send it out at like 75, 80% potential because we have to, no matter what the customer plays, we wanna make sure we don't overdrive the woofers. So if he's playing Spanish music, for example, the woofers aren't getting all the, po oh, the power they possibly could, but if they're playing hip hop and rap, it's pushing the woofers to the limit. So we have to adjust in between. So the client is not getting 100%. With the bass knob, we can set it to maximum mm -hmm. 
undistorted. And then with the bass knob, he can add as much bass or take away as much bass until he hits the clip indicator and then back down a little bit. Yeah. So you, there's definitely value in it. If you have a clip indicator, you can definitely, and this is not something that can be argued. If you think we're wrong, why does every single competition guy run a bass knob on their bike? Because certain songs require a little bit more bass, certain songs require a little less bass, so that's why they do it. Now, we can do it safely with the clip indicator, and I believe it provides value. Me so, too. We ran a little long with the video, thought we just wanted to get some information out there. Now, check out the badass mount that Dube made in his personal truck with his uh, remote level controller. Look how beautiful that is. That's the OEM panel in the 2023 Silverado. Here's the knob. There's the power indicator on the right and the clip indicator on the left. Let's get this thing fired up. and safe.